y'all and welcome back to my little corner of the internet my name is Lila and for today's video we're actually answering uh, this question that I got on TikTok so this question needed a lot more than 60 seconds to answer so that's why we're making it over here on YouTube and if you don't follow me on TikTok go follow me over there I post what I eat in a days and some small recipe videos before we jump into it though don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a video from me and leave me a comment down below, do you currently meal prep? What's your meal prep system? Let me know. And just like the title of this video says, I'm gonna give y'all my five steps to meal prepping. I do this every single week so that I can throw together meals in just a few minutes, especially because we've been home so much more often the last year. It's really nice to be able to make really healthy meals at home really quickly so that we can focus on getting work done through the week. Also, if you see like black on my hands, it's because I just painted my nails, that's why they're a little messy. I just finished painting them. We're gonna clean it up after they dry, but um, yeah, that's what that is. Okay, let's get into it. Step one, pick what meals you're gonna meal prep for. For me, I meal prep for lunch and dinner. I don't meal prep for breakfast because I'm usually just gonna make a smoothie or some pancakes or oatmeal, really, really quick, easy things. So I don't meal prep for breakfast, although I have in the past. And once you've decided which meals you're gonna meal prep for, you need to decide how many different meals you're going to prep for each. So typically I will do two different meal preps for dinner and two different meal preps for lunch, and or I will prep individual things that I can then use for lunch and or dinner. Some people may want to meal prep so that they can have a different dinner every single night of the week. I'm not really like that. I'm okay with having the same thing multiple times in a week. Hell, I would probably just make one meal if I was on my own and eat the same thing all week. Certain kinds of food are gonna be really easy to make a bunch of different types of things with the same ingredients, so you also wanna think about that. Are you gonna make one type of meal? Like, taco stuff is really easy to have a taco week and have tacos one night, have nachos the next night, have a taco salad, a burrito bowl, burrito. There's so many different ways you can go with the same ingredients. So if you're looking for a variety but you don't want to meal prep a whole bunch of different things, think about those kind of meals. And before we go any further, I wanted to let you guys know that there is going to be a worksheet PDF down in the description that you can click on and download so that you can work through these questions and have just a worksheet to help you meal prep if you've never meal prepped before. All right, the next question to ask yourself is how much time do you have to dedicate to meal prepping? So personally, I do my meal prepping on Mondays. I go to the grocery store Monday morning and then I use Monday afternoon to meal prep. So I have a good four hours about to meal prep. Now, not everything is gonna take that long. I like to go live while I'm meal prepping a lot of times too, so that makes it take longer, but you can definitely take less time. Not everybody has just four hours in a week to dedicate to something. Maybe you just have an hour at night before bed. Maybe you just have an hour in the morning before work. Maybe you just have a couple hours on Sunday. Whatever you have, figure it out because that is gonna be important to what recipes you choose to make and how much you choose to meal prep. And we'll get into that as this video goes on. So you're ready to meal prep. You wanna meal prep for this next week ahead of you. Where do you start? I want you to go through your kitchen and look at what you already have. On this channel, you know that we are all about low waste, so we wanna use up the ingredients that you already have. So maybe you can't figure out how to use a specific ingredient that you have. You have some leftover cucumber or something from the week before. Look up recipes that use that ingredient. Google is a great thing. You have access to so, so many recipes, so many different types of cuisine that you may not have tried before that you can use up your extra ingredients in. So for this next part, you're gonna need about 30 minutes to sit down and actually do some preparation before you can even meal prep. I know, pre-preparation? You're gonna need to do a little pre-prep, okay? Sit down at your computer, decide which recipes that you wanna make this week. So if you're choosing two dinner recipes and two lunch recipes, or you're choosing one dinner and one lunch, or you're choosing one thing that you can make into a bunch of different things, choose what those recipes are gonna be. And make sure you actually read them all the way through so you see how time consuming they are and all the ingredients that they're going to need. 
once you've chosen these recipes, you need to make sure you save them. I personally write my own recipes each week, which takes a little bit extra time, but it's what I do. I'm always trying to write recipes that are delicious that I can share with y'all, so I use my meal prepping as experiment time. So this is where what I do is actually a little bit different than what I'm telling you guys to do and I'm gonna explain that a little bit. You can choose to do it the way I do it or you can choose to do it the way I'm telling y'all to do it, but it is slightly different. I write my recipes on Sunday evening, but I actually go to the farmer's market on Sunday morning. I use the farmer's market as inspiration. I walk around, I see what vegetables, what fruits are right in my area that I can buy, and I use that as inspiration for what to cook that week. This means though that I have to be good at not overbuying or underbuying, and that has just come from a lot of practice, but if you feel confident enough to do it, then I think something like that is fine to get inspiration from. I would not recommend going to a grocery store before writing your recipes because then you really just have no clue what you need to buy. And I also have that fail safe, that correction, so that if I get something at the farmer's market and I decide I want to make it and oops, it's not enough, I can get more at the store or I can get whatever I need to make that recipe that I got inspired by when I saw that vegetable. One of the things that I saw at the market that I went ahead and bought that inspired me this week was Brussels sprout greens. So it's like the big leaves at the top of the Brussels sprout, you have to strip them like kale and just sauteing them in some chili oil. It is so yummy. I wanted to make that as a side, so I went ahead and grabbed some and incorporated that into my meal prep for the week. So while you're choosing your recipes, kind of think about what's in season. It's very good to eat in season because food has to travel less distance, it's less wasteful, so I always like to eat in season. All right, I know that was a lot of questions for step one, but we are finally through step one, moving on to step two. So step two, you're going to break down your recipe into a prep list and a grocery list. For the prep list, you're going to break down everything that needs to be cut, everything that needs to be washed, anything like beans that may need to be made, anything like sauces that can be made. All of these different things can be done as part of the meal prep so that you can more easily throw together a recipe on the night of or the day of. And for the grocery list, of course, check what's in your kitchen write down everything you need to buy. That's super easy. Step three, go shopping. Go to the grocery store, get all the things that you need. I know some people don't like grocery shopping, but I do, I find it very fun. My partner hates it, so I go alone. It's my little alone outing on Mondays, it's nice. I personally like to stick to my grocery list as close as possible when I go to the grocery store, but hey, you do you. Step four, we're gonna get prepping. Throw on a podcast, a TV show, some music, whatever gets you going, whatever you can stay focused to, and pull out all the vegetables, all the things that you're going to need to meal prep, and take out that prep list, and start checking them off the list. Some examples of things that you can prep before the day of, so that you're not making the entire meal, but you're just prepping the pieces of it, the components of it, are things like marinara sauce, or pretty much any sauce that's going into a recipe, prep that cut up all of the vegetables for your recipe. The garlic, the onions, the carrots, whatever, all of it. This is also really nice because you can cut up a whole bunch of garlic at one time instead of wasting time cutting up garlic throughout the week because it's, it's a waste of time. Just, just cut a big lot of it at the beginning of the week. Any greens that need to be washed or any vegetables that need to be washed, go ahead and wash them, strip them, cut them. There are lots and lots of ideas on Google in ways that you can store vegetables so that they stay good longer, y'all. I can strip kale and it'll stay good for a month. I buy carrots like once a month and they stay good. Vegetables can stay good if you know how to keep them. Fruit a little less well, but still you, you can keep them for longer than you think if they're stored properly. And prepped food like sauces, like beans, can usually be kept for up to seven days. That is the limit that I would keep things, that's why I meal prep every week. And step five is finish making your meal. So I will get everything prepped before the day I cook my meal, but, but on the day that I want to eat it, I cook it up fresh. I just think it tastes better that way. You can fully cook your meals and leave them in containers to eat throughout the week. 
that is perfectly acceptable. I just prefer not to because I like my food to be fresher. I don't really like using the microwave, so that's just personal preference, personal preference. Things like casseroles are really good for if you want to like do the full meal prep one day and eat it throughout the week. I will do that with some casseroles. And that is how you meal prep. I hope that this answered your question and I'm going to answer it on TikTok just saying, hey, I made it a video answering this question. Don't forget to follow me over there. And don't forget to check down below for the worksheet so that you can meal prep at home. You have a little help, a little step-by-step -step guide that you can put up in your kitchen or that you can you know, write down your recipes and your answers to all the questions there to help you get better at meal prepping. Because I know it's not something that everyone does, but it's something that a lot of people want to do. Trust me, it saves so much time and so much headache. You're like deep into work and you're trying to work from home and then you're like, oh shit, it's lunchtime. I don't have time to make something. Orders out, no more. No, no more. You go in the kitchen, you already got something to eat. It's really great for people that also like wait until they're hungry to like want to cook something because then you're just like, oh, I'm hungry. I can eat something now. It's, it's just, it's there in my fridge, my healthy meal. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a video from me. And drop a comment on this video. Do you currently meal prep? Do you want to meal prep? Let me know your thoughts. Also, thoughts on the new hair. <laughs> I will see you guys next time. Bye, y'all.